Hey guys, I'm Elena Kotauri, and this is Voices of Lilith. Have you ever wondered how female musicians experience the world? I myself am a vocalist, a voice coach and a guitarist. Our metal community has grown to be a diverse and highly artistic world. So in this podcast series, we give a voice to the female musicians which create and shape our music. We dive deep into their unique experiences so you can find a way to connect to their visions and be empowered in your actions now. Let's find new ideas, raise awareness and stick together. Are you as excited as I am? Let's hop in. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have another awesome metal vocalist here. She's fronting the band Burning Dame, which hails from Hungary, and they just released their first LP, Beware the Dame. Welcome, Lusa. So good to have you here today. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, I really wanted to do this interview, and I saw your previous interviews, and they were amazing. So I'm really, really happy that I can be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for the love. <laughs> So could you tell us a little more about your band? What do you guys do and what is your main message? Um, our band is, um, they usually call it stoner or doom metal, but um, we are just do what we want to do. So we really don't want to fit into just one box, right. um, especially for me. Um, as a vocalist, I don't really do the kind of stoner metal-ish um, vocals. And I think that's, that's the whole message, uh, instrumental-wise, that we don't really want to um, fit into a box in Hungary. Um, the most popular bands um, in this scene are mostly modern metal bands. So, and we really, we were like, we don't want to do uh, modern metal because, because it's not us. Right. So we will not do this just because for money or for fame. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, lyrically, um, I deal with a lot of issues, I think. I lo lo love to criticize society. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, uh, one of my favorite songs, uh, One in Five, deals with sexual assault, mm -hmm. especially towards women. So it was a really important topic to me and I really wanted it to be on our first EP to like introduce ourselves like we are not taking any shit. Awesome. Um, can I swear because I don't know if it's okay or not. Um, so yeah, uh, the main message is, is to really look around you and think eventually. Um, of course, not all of our songs about this um, because I love um, musicals, which is weird, <laughs> but I love them. And I take inspiration from these kind of uh, music too and lyrics too. So um, kind of like uh, we, were the, we Were the Queen. It's, it's closer to like these type of musical numbers, but that's it. Awesome. Yeah, I can totally relate. Like there was one vocal student of mine which introduced me to Beetlejuice, the musical, and I was so amazed by it. It was so awesome. I mean, the vocalists are awesome and awesome arranging of music, so I can totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So um, the pandemic is hitting musicians of several countries really hard uh, in Germany, but as well in other countries from which I had podcast guests like Sri Lanka or Russia. So could you tell us what the situation is like at the moment for musicians and the general music scene in Hungary? Yeah, um, we can't play, of course, so it's really hard for us, um, especially as a band who just started. We only had one show <laughs> um, and it is really hard for us because we wanted to release our first um, LP as like, a, as like a forerunner of the shows, of like a tour or something. Yeah. And obviously we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were like, I just release it. <laughs> like we didn't want to wait 
uh, anymore. So it's really hard. Um, a lot of my friends are musicians, especially in the metal scene, in the younger metal scene. And we are all struggling a bit. Um, of course, I'm a uni student, so I have university on the side, but most of my friends uh, had to like find a job um, or find another job mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> because they don't really have income from music right now. So it's really hard, but I, I hope it's getting better. Um, right now we are start to, um, they opened uh, a few places, but we still cannot have um, like uh, music events. So, but I hope that maybe at summer, right. um, we can finally play <laughs> some yeah. shows. Yeah, for sure. It's really hard on every musician right now. It's uh, totally and the whole art industry. So yeah, yeah, can relate. Yeah. All right. Um, what is Burning Dame planning for this time of the lockdown? <laughs> How are you guys celebrating the LP? I mean, you already said that you can't play right now. So what else? Are there any other things you're planning to do to promote it or anything? Well, actually, we're just waiting. <laughs> okay. Um, we are not uh, that great as promoting. Uh, <laughs> we realize that we need to put a lot more work into promoting uh, than we thought. Um, but we are just waiting to finally play to people because, as I said, we only have one show and it was amazing. Um, and and we planned a lot of shows because um, COVID hit um, in in like uh, bigger clubs uh, in Budapest. So we hope that we can uh, do, we can play it uh, at these clubs, um, maybe it's summer. Um, but yeah, that's it because um, as, as a smaller band in Hungary, you, you rarely can like uh, go to like a radio or to, we don't really have like uh, music TVs. So it's really hard to like promote it in like mainstream media. Right. But we tried uh, with Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> so mostly online. Right. Yeah. We, we just wanted to like uh, release this album because we love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and we just really wanted to show um, our audience and to people what we are about. And maybe next time uh, we will promote it better. <laughs> but, but right now we are just waiting to play these songs live because we are um, a live band. Yeah. Um, and we want to be <laughs> a live band. Of course. So. So yeah. that's our main thing, yeah. I understand. I mean, especially hard rock and metal and all these alternative stuff, it lives from the life experience. Yeah. Right? That's like, it's not like a classical concert where you just sit still and you just watch. You really have to move and be in the, in the zone. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And I read that you're pansexual, right? So do, yeah. you, do you know how the modern situation for the LGBTQ scene is in Hungary? Could you tell us a little about that? <laughs> Um, well, that's an issue. Um, we, so I, I love to get political, but I don't know how <laughs> political you want me to get. Just say what you uh, want to say, girl. <laughs> we have a lot of issues yeah. um, with this topic, especially regarding transgender people. Um, and now LGBTQ couples. Um, so I think it, it, and what's, what's so sad that our government mm, just literally to COVID and the restrictions and because of these restrictions, because they gained so much power because of COVID, um, they literally just wrote laws and it uh, got through and we can't really do anything about it, especially because uh, 
we cannot gather, so we cannot do demonstrations right now. And there was a pretty harsh law about uh, transgender people, um, I think in the first half of COVID, uh, where they eventually cannot really um, do, cannot change their name legally, cannot change the gender legally. And it, it was bad before, <laughs> but it's way worse right now. So um, I actually want to um, encourage uh, my audience and my band's audience to be open about um, LGBTQ people, especially because I am in the community. Um, but it's still like uh, a topic that we don't really talk about in Hungary and in the metal scene. So, well, but I try to be the one to. <laughs> why, why do you think that the metal scene is not talking about this? What, what is your opinion? Well, um, <laughs> most of the metal scene is um, white, cis, hetero males. So for them, it's not an issue. And if you think about it, a few uh, years ago or like 10, 20 years ago, even women were like, uh, how to say, uh, a strange phenomenon okay. in rock and metal music. And now that we have um, more minorities in the scene, um, I think it's getting better in a sense that we have more like LGBTQ people, more people of color um, in the scene. Um, not in Hungary because we are mostly um, like cis head whites <laughs> to mm -hmm. say, um, but, uh, but I think it's getting better. Um, but in Hungary, we don't really have like open LGBTQ metal musicians that I know about. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. I hope that um, it will get better in Hungary and in the Hungarian metal scene. Um, and I really try to encourage people and we'll encourage when we finally can play shows to be open uh, to, to basically everyone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, same as in Germany, there are not many bands that are actually LGBTQ or are speaking out for this. I mean, uh, we were happy to have the same sex marriage like a few years ago, but I mean, it's the 21st century. So it's like, how the hell could it just happen right now yeah. and not like 50, 60, even more years back? So yeah. it's it's so uh, slow progress. So yeah, uh, things are not going well. Yeah, totally understand that. And um, is there like if you're uh, okay to speak about this, do you think that there's uh, a lot of discrimination going on in Hungary? Fortunately, I, my friends and the people uh, I know are really open. So thankfully, I've never been um, assaulted because um, I am in the LGBT community, um, especially because I pass as a cis hat female. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of people in the LGBT community in Hungary who were um, assaulted, discriminated against uh, just because they are uh, in the LGBT community. And usually, uh, we usually have a pride <laughs> um, and Often in mainstream media, it's they they don't really like to um, show it in a good light, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really hard because in Hungary um, we don't really talk about these issues, right. and especially like older people. Um, because we uh, younger people, <laughs> so we are in our twenties or uh, teenagers, we obviously talk about this because I think we are more 
into the internet culture and we meet so many different people yeah. on the internet so for us it's like a normal thing to talk about these issues same with sexual assault um but for all the people uh, in the just in general it's not really a talk about topic but if they talk about it it's mostly in like a negative way so so still a lot to work on for society yeah. right yeah. yeah but same in germany i mean uh i mean it is there in the public media but uh same here like uh, it's not very much touched upon or not in a mm. positive light but I'm, i'm happy to see that there are small communities which are fighting for this and people getting on the streets if it is possible uh, i think it, it will take a few a couple more years or maybe generations for this to establish in society yeah that this is more generations problem. exactly generations. Exactly, to normalize this. So um, relating to that, how have you been living as a woman in the music scene? Are there important experiences that you would like to share with us which were caused by your gender? Um, I think our metal scene, like in Budapest, uh, um, it's really open to women. Um, I actually have a lot of uh, friends band friends who are women and it comes from that they don't really see us in a different way than uh, male singers or vocalists um, and it's it's good like <laughs> um, uh, because our guitarist Leve, uh, she she is obviously uh, a woman and And actually, we have different experiences. Um, but my experience is that I don't really feel uh, discrimination against me. Mm. But I don't really know how other uh, women feel in the scene. But I think in the younger metal scene, it's, it's okay. So we don't really have problems with these. Mostly it's it's the audience that sometimes they love to like be a little bit touchy or yeah, for <laughs> sure. think that if you are sexy on the stage you want to be sexy off the stage uh sure. but but um musicians in the scene they don't really see us uh, differently than like other men musicians so great to hear yeah yeah so i think yeah the same that younger generations don't face this problem as much but uh like when i started i mean i'm not that old but when i started as well it was a uh, it was still something new and also i grew up on a countryside so it was a little new as well that there are women in the scene and doing this kind of stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, like you are either too sexy or too in intimidating <laughs> yeah exactly and if you're both they are like <laughs> They can't really say anything because they're like, yeah, you're sexy, but also, oh my God. <laughs> What so are it's you? like, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So, yeah, but it's good to see that this is normalizing as well. And there are so many uh, female bands nowadays which are rising up and female singers, especially. Yeah. What are your thoughts on um, why there are so many female vocalists? And I mean, you have a guitarist as well. And, yeah. uh, and um, there are many vocalists so what do you think why females are mostly vocalists um i think when we are younger <laughs> we are young girls um we usually thought that um a girl should sing and not or just play p the piano yeah or the violin but not really electric guitar or drums so I think it comes from this, like, uh, this upbringing um, as, as a female in the society that you usually thought that that's the feminine kind of music. Right. Um, but I think um, we, we start to get through this because um, we see more uh, female like uh, musicians and not just vocalists in the scene. Um, and I think um, it's, it's a little bit 
for me uh, because I cannot play any instruments, only the piano, but like it's really bad. So <laughs> um, for me, it's really exciting to be on the front of the stage, um, to be a front man, front woman. Yeah. Uh, because I always looked up to um, like the vocalists of different bands. And I'm really um, theatrical, <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier to be theatrical when you're a vocalist, obviously. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, and I always love to like watch, I don't know, My Chemical Romance um, live videos and Jaraway just being crazy. And I was like, yeah, I want to be that crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so for me, it was always, and obviously I grew up on like Avril Lavigne and Lady Gaga, so and Pink, awesome. one of my favorite singers. <laughs> and obviously they have so much power and and they really put on a show. And for me, it's not just about singing, it's not just about the vocals, but also about the performance. Um, and I just, I think a lot of uh, women really like to perform and not just sing and maybe that's why we have more female vocalists than um like guitarists or bassists yeah, yeah right but yeah. i have a few uh female drummer friends cool so <laughs> cool. <laughs> because i i went to like a, a music school um after high school where i actually met uh, our guitarist Livy, and obviously uh, they train um, all kind of musicians so from like drums to guitar vocals um i don't trumpet <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the school had a lot of um female students and not just uh, vocalists but also as i said drummers and guitarists so right it's easier to meet these women in like a school great great good to hear all right and uh you're also a vegetarian so i'm glad to see a fellow <laughs> plant eater here because i'm vegan um is it an easy option to be a veggie or vegan in hungary is it is the public generally accepting this lifestyle um it's easier to be vegetarian than vegan because but i think it's a uh, it's an um, international struggle that vegan foods are a little bit more expensive yeah um but i think it's it's not hard to be vegetarian obviously like traditional hungarian foods are mostly meat based but my mother she <laughs> tries to find like alternatives to all kind of hungarian foods uh in uh, to be vegetarian so like uh i don't know like we have the goulash uh I think you pronounce it goulash. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> and <laughs> and it, it's easy to make it vegetarian. I think yeah. because you just omit the meat, and it is vegetarian. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so I don't think it's it's that hard. I I don't drink mi uh, milk, uh, just uh, plant based milk. So it's a little bit pricier than normal milk, but. That's all. So, but I have uh, one of my um, metal vocalist uh, friend. Uh, she is uh, vegan, and her boyfriend uh, also vegan and also a metal vocalist. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so they're both vegan, and uh, and she said that it's not that hard in Hungary to be vegan or vegetarian. So, great. It's mostly like grandmas who are like. Why are you not eating this chicken soup? Are you and getting like, your proteins? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I love my grandma. But she was like, I've been a vegetarian for like five years now, I think. Yeah. And she's still like, but you don't eat chicken? Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> what about fish? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, lastly, um, I'm curious because on Instagram you called your music female fronted metal. Um, what do you think of this name? Like, why did you call it female fronted and not any other thing? Um, honestly, because it, it catches the eye. Yeah. And um, I think 
um, a lot of people, especially younger girls, um, they want to see a uh, female, uh, want to see women in the front. They want to see female musicians. And in a way, you can kind of guide them with this female fronted um, word that yeah they can listen to this music because it is for them mm -hmm. and um especially now on tiktok i see a lot of um bands where are uh, where there are many uh female musicians and vocalists and i think it's really important to young girls to have these kind of role models mm -hmm. i don't really wanted myself that but but for us it was like i don't know maria brink from in this moment or taylor Mumsen or lizzie hale awesome. and and uh, side story i actually met lizzie hale once i met her story once oh. with libby with our guitarist nice <laughs> uh, we had a chance to they played uh, at budapest i don't know two years ago and we like it was luck but we eventually uh, could get to backstage with them so but it's it was um, a really long night to say <laughs> <laughs> of course i mean you gotta you gotta use the opportunity to meet them yeah, yeah. and i think um back to the question i think um we are the next um generation who can stand in front of like these young girls who mostly see um, male fronted uh, bands and say that you can be just as metal when you are a girl uh, you can do the same things when you are a girl you can be just as good as a i don't know screamer if you are a girl so um i think it's really important and that's why i that's why we chose to put female fronted in our bio to firstly emphasize that is different from other bands because it's still uh, a differentiating factor mm -hmm. in metal music uh, and second because we just really wanted to show that i don't know girl power goes to the front i don't <laughs> But we, we wanted to emphasize that um, we, I sing about um, issues that are female issues. Awesome. So it's more of an empowerment statement. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's very beautiful to hear. I think it's very important because there are so many different bands rising up from, you know, Sri Lanka, like uh, yeah. one podcast guest I had, uh, Shihara, she was from Sri Lanka, the first female fronted band in there. So that's also cool. So, Lucy, thank you so much for your time and energy and this conversation. Um, could you tell our audience where they can follow your work and what they could do in order to support your band and your vision? Where should would you like to guide them? Yeah, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, but we don't really use that, so <laughs> maybe not. Um, you can listen to our music on YouTube, um, on Spotify, on Tidal, like basically every streaming uh, platforms and you can buy your album on Bandcamp if you want to <laughs> <laughs> because we don't have a hard copy right now but if you want to support us uh, you can buy the album on Bandcamp and just basically if you have Spotify just give us a quick listen and that's it <laughs> awesome thank you so much <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you for taking the time to listen to my podcast I hope it brought new insights to you and may become food for your thoughts. If you like this episode and would like to follow me along my mission, I'd be so happy about every form of support. Rate this podcast and follow me on elenakotauri.com or on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to connect with you there. Until next time, horns up.